we're live to Tulip. Oh, such a sweetie. So Tulip has really warmed up to me. Oh my goodness. Oh, she is so sweet and so affectionate. She came out of her kennel on her own this time. When I when I got back from the walk, oh, I walked her outside a little bit so she could tinkle. And everything she does is just adorable. <laughs> Even the way she tinkles is adorable. Everything. And I, I noticed she was walking so tenderly and gingerly. And this is why. She has a brace. I was like, what is the brace for? Look, this leg. See that? It's like broken or something. I guess her leg broke and it just healed that way over time. So she kind of walks on it very gingerly. See, there's a brush. We're just brushing your girl. There you go. Now that she trusts me and she actually likes for me to touch her and, and pet her, now I can move on to the next step of actually brushing her and providing her some relief from the discomfort that she might be feeling from a lot of this dander, excessive dead hair that's just, you know, hanging out in those pores in her skin. And I'm just doing it very lightly so that it doesn't really make her feel too uncomfortable. But even though with a very light touch, look at what I'm getting. See all that? So this is the dead hair that causes the discomfort, the bumps in the skin, the odor, all of that. Debbie Jack. Hey, what's up, Debbie? Hey, Jan, I missed your first part. I'll have to go back and watch. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. The first part, she was just ignoring me. She wouldn't look at me. She wouldn't let me touch her. And now, oh, my goodness, when we were outside, she just kept trying to walk right up in my arms. And then when I hold her, oh, my goodness, let me show you. Oh, we don't even need this. She's not going anywhere. <laughs> take this off for her. But look, when I hold her... Watch what she does. Oh my goodness, she is so adorable. Oh, okay, okay. So when I hold her, oh, I'm trying to move my camera. See, look at her. She just cuddles up like a little baby. And then when I hold her like in a certain way, oh, oh you're okay. I heard her bones creak. She must be old. But she kind of lays back like a little baby. Oh my goodness. Okay. There you go. I'm gonna be very gentle with her. Slowly let her up on the table. But oh my God, isn't she so adorable? So a lot of this rough, the rough hairs, it's dead old hairs. That's why it's rough it's lost its uh luster you know it's lackluster and dull and brittle and maybe not all of it's dead you know most of it probably is healthy hair but you just it feels rough because of the rough hair that's in there in the mix you know all of that so that's what we're going for when we're clearing the skin uh hey what's up kim marquee Make sure I get everybody Pearl's Jam. What's up, Pearl's Jam? She seems so sweet. She Yeah, isn't she? Claire, what's up, Claire? Welcome back. Okay. So I'm going to very gently just brush through her coat. Oh, man. I can feel like the dangery stuff coming out, like powdery stuff coming out of her skin. I can literally feel it on my fingertips. Good girl, it's gotta probably feel so good for them. When you finally get that out of there, when you finally brush it out, oh, look at that, she's like leaning into it. Good girl. Okay, good brush. Nice. <laughs> she let out a little burp. Okay. And she let out a little too earlier too. <laughs> so cute. Everything this little girl does is cute. Even when she toots, it's cute. <laughs> oh man. There we go. And what I'm doing with the slicker brush is I'm just trying to break the coat up, get the 
top, you know, the dead hair that's hit in the top layer that comes out easily with the brush, with the slicker brush. You know, just removing a lot of this, this dead hair there, the bulk of it, the tangles, the little bald up mats, and just kind of getting the hair nice and soft and separated. And then I'm going to go through with my comb, my metal comb, and really just kind of clear everything out of the skin. And then once the skin is clear, the pores are clear, exfoliated kind of, you know, of all the dirt and debris. And, oh, I don't know if you saw that. It's like this black powdery stuff that came out. But anyways, when once we clear the skin of all of that, then when, when I take her into the shower and I give her a bath, the water and the shampoo and the products are going to be able to go in that the, those pores because we cleared out some space for it to see by removing all of this now there's space in the skin where all that dead hair was and now the water and the shampoo can actually get in there in those pores and give that skin a really good thorough conditioning okay clearing clearing it out and then <clears throat> replacing it with the oils and minerals and all the nutrients and good stuff that comes into the shampoo it comes with the shampoo it you know it's not able to do what it was designed to do and penetrate that skin when all of this dirty hair and all this debris is still in there oh i just heard the bone creak a little bit okay there we go gonna hold her. She's so frail. It's like skin and bones. With the other dog that they rescued as well, Roycey, when he first came, he was in really bad shape too. His rear leg actually was like just dangling and useless. I thought they would they might have to amputate it. I thought they might have a three-legged Bijan. But you know, I guess having a really loving family like like these people are, you know, it, it makes a world of difference. Maybe in a few months, you know, she'll gain some weight, you know, put a little bit of meat on her bones here. She'll be healthier and happier. And then we'll probably see her real personality start to come out as well. When she starts to feel comfortable, like this is her home. Oh yeah, that feels good, huh? There you go. Okay. And just by brushing out this little bit, and you know, I didn't really spend too much time because, you know, I'm not going to do like a, like full on, you know, heavy duty card out because I just met her. This is her first time. I, I want her to enjoy this. There you go. You can lay down. There you go, girl. And so I want her to have a pleasant experience this time. Just make it really nice and comfortable. There you go. And I'm, as I'm brushing out this dead hair, it's got to feel better for her.
I'm brushing this hair up because I want it to stand when I give her a nice little trim. Look at her. Oh. <laughs> Such a sweetie. Oh my goodness. Such a sweet girl. And you know, with dogs like this, I almost want to be more gentle and extra careful just to show them how much I appreciate them being so nice and sweet. You know, we get our share of those dogs that nip and snap and give us an attitude and, you know, fair play, right? I mean, understandably, we're, we're in here brushing these tangles and mats, making them feel uncomfortable. So, and we're messing with their body. So yeah, I mean, you know, I get it, it's fair enough. But whenever you get a dog like this, who's just so submissive and just so sweet, she just, oh, I just wanna be extra careful. You know, just extra loving, because I really appreciate it. There you go. Oh, you know, the crazy thing is, so the dog that caused this little bruise here on my thumb is growing out now. It was down there where the cuticle was. Um, but the dog that gave me this bruise, he was such a sweetheart this last time. Oh my God. He usually whines and cries and all that, but to this last time he was such a good boy. He didn't cry or whine one time, you know, like he was so nice and sweet. I was thinking like, maybe he feels bad about biting me, you know, like, anyways, it was nice. But yeah, these dogs, I mean, they really do, they know a lot more than what we give them credit for. And they remember a lot more. So when we give them a good experience, they'll remember that too. There we go. Good girl. We don't want it to be too challenging on them either because then we don't want to overwhelm them with stress. But we do want it to be a little challenging for them too, you know? That way when they overcome it and they get through the activity, they feel like they've grown as well. They say that we feel the best about ourselves. Our self-esteem level, our confidence goes up when we get through something difficult. So we don't want to make it just way too easy on them either. But, you know, we don't want to push them or overwhelm them either. Stress them too much. You can overwhelm them. But I remember a dog trainer I was working with, he told me that this is stress on a dog, but it's a good kind of stress if you do it right, it's the kind of stress where they feel like they've grown from it. Kind of like when you take a final exam and you get through it, you feel like, wow, yes, I got through it. You know, it wasn't easy, but I got through it. And you feel good about yourself. You feel like you've grown. Same thing with the grooming the dogs. Oh, she's definitely older. So I changed my mind. I think she's probably around, maybe around 10 or 11 years old because her eyes are kind of gray and she is just so frail. Oh my goodness. Oh, Tola, you're such a good girl. Such a good girl. Oh man. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. There's a lot of coming out. Okay. Um, Jennifer L. Hey, what's up, Jennifer L. Lee says, what a difference. She really likes and trusts you. Yeah, right? Oh, my God. Because I love her. I think she feels how much I love her. And I just eat her. Ah, she's so <laughs> tiny. Okay. Uh, she is, Did you adopt her, June? No, my client adopted her. So my client has two other Bijans that I come and groom regularly. And, well, and I'm, I'm <sighs> judging by the way she's talking about little Tulip here. <laughs> I think it's safe to assume that this is the new member of their family. But um, from what I was told, this is like a trial period just to see, you know, if she gets along, if they really want her and things like that. So I'm not sure if it's finalized yet, but kind of feels like, you know, by the way they're talking about her, she's going to stick around. <laughs> they're going to adopt her. Um, 
APEA. Hey, what's the APA dot grooming? Hey, quick question. How long do you usually take to groom? Uh, I usually take about three to four hours. What do you do if your client wants everything done quickly? I tell them to find another groomer. <laughs> um, because there's so many groomers that can get the dog done in an hour or two hours, you know? There's so many groomers that do that. Go call them, you know? That's not what I do. Uh, Jennifer, how old is she? My guess is maybe 10, right? Maybe 10. Look at her. She has like the little gray spots in her eyes. She's going blind a little bit. So maybe 8 or 9 or 10. Is she senior? Yeah, definitely senior. She's already whiter by getting rid of the dead stuff. Exactly, Lee. Exactly. She's already looking and feeling better and softer and cleaner. I wish all girls take their time to be gentle and treat them sweet like you. Yeah, you know, but I mean, this is my niche. And I've, I've kind of designed my business model so I can do this because this is the way it makes me feel good. Um, her poor leg makes my heart. Yeah, right. Me too. I have a client who brings a schnauzer, who brings in a schnauzer and wants her done in less than an hour. I don't like being rushed and told, and told what to do. Exactly. And people like that, I just let them know that um, I think you're looking for someone who, you know, can get your dog groomed pretty quickly within an hour or, or two. And that's just not me. You know, I can't do that. I'm sorry. You know, and it's okay. <clears throat> There's no shame in it. <clears throat> I realize I'm not the dog groomer for every dog, you know. And not every dog is going to like me. And that's okay. Not every person is going to like me. And that's all right. You know, just, um, we just got to find the group that does like our services and the way we do things and spend our time serving them. Because like my friend Josh says, um, he's at clipperpros.com. He's my sharpener guy. And he's also a pretty good friend. But he said that you cannot do your best work for your best clients when you're too stressed out by your worst clients. And, you know, and I think in that Schnauzer situation, that rings true. You know, if you had another client in there and you know, that's one of your really good clients who does value you and tips you well and you know, always tells you how much she appreciates you, and then her dog gets put behind and you know, and she's kind of inconvenienced, you're a really good client because you're rushing to try to get the schnauzer done so you don't get yelled at and get in trouble by the schnauzer owner so you're stressed out and scared and not doing your best work there because you're rushed and then the other client who really does value you and they're one of your best clients their service kind of suffers a little bit as well and it made sense to me so it's like yeah get rid of the clients who stress you out because you cannot do your best work for your best clients when you're too stressed out by your worst clients. I really like that. And that's by Josh. Um, oh man, what was his last name? <coughs> Josh Aaron. I, <laughs> I think his name is Josh Aaron. But anyways, um, his name is Josh. He, he owns Clipper Pros in Buford. And if you want to ship your scissors or clippers to him, um, you can look them up on clipperpros.com and I'm not, I'm not getting paid for that or anything, you know, I'm not like a affiliate, paid affiliate or anything like that. He's just a really good guy and his wife, Lindsay, um, they're just good people and I, I love going and visiting with them and, you know, just like supporting local businesses, small business owners and good people. Anyways, um, I wish I could take that credit for that line because it's a really good line. <laughs> But Josh was the one that said it to me, and I really liked it. You cannot do your best work for your best clients when you're too stressed out by your worst clients. Truth right there. Hashtag truth nugget. All right. Uh, Kim says, I love, oh, Ray, oh, my God, I love her, too. I just can't stop kissing her. Um, John said, John Collins, or any breed for that matter. What a sweet girl. Uh-huh. <clears throat> thank you so much for what you do, June. You're a god. Oh, thank you, John. I appreciate that. You are inspiring, dude. Found you yesterday and laughed so hard about getting old. <laughs> yeah, I feel it. Oh, my goodness. My knee pad just popped off, too. I was like, oh, do I want to take the time to put it back? Oh, thank you. 
Thank you, Tula. I love you, girl. Oh my God, I found a girl <laughs> for me. Oh, she is so white and sweet and so fluffy. I found a girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sure, get me excited, you know? Wow. All those kisses coming from her. Wow, I was kissing her and now she kissed me. Got me all excited, got me singing and everything. Anyways. <laughs> it was probably because we're I'm talking about getting old and this old girl's probably like, I feel ya. Oh. Maybe she got excited too. She was probably like, oh, I thought this was a youngin. He's getting old too. Maybe he's my type. I am your type, girl. <laughs> okay. So I like to work out all these tangles and everything before the bath. That way, when I wash her, I don't have to even worry about her. You know, I don't have to worry about the mats and tangles getting worse or getting more tangled up. Oh, I'm sorry about that, girl. There we go. And she'll, um, she'll lather up much better. So I'm using less shampoo because she lathers up much easier. She's going to rinse much cleaner. There we go. So once I'm able to get this comb all the way through every square inch of her body, then I'm going to wash her. And then when I dry her, She's going to dry so easily. She's pretty much going to start air drying on her own after I towel dry her because because all of this dead hair that mats up and everything, that's what holds on to the moisture like a sponge. And it gets hard to dry them. But when we get the dead hair is all combed out, then, there you go, then drying is really not an issue. And I don't have to worry about all these mats and tangles while I'm drying her either. There we go. So it's like a give, you want to give, you know, not just pull, give and pull. You know, so you go in and you pull out. So that it's like a, it's not constant pressure, you know, it's little pressure and then release. There you go. <clears throat> that way they don't feel too scared because they feel like, okay, there is a release. It's not just constant pressure pulling on them. There we go. Her head was matted. <laughs> I haven't really seen that before. Uh, Bijan's head get matted. But yeah, there's all these little mats on here. Now they're all out. There we go. Good girl. See that? So just by kind of tapping at it, you don't have to tug at it. Just kind of tap at it, tease it, and the mats just come pouring out. See that? Just gotta be patient. Patient and persistent. There we go. It's really not about strength. It's not about how strong you are. You're not pulling these mats out by strength. You're pulling it out um, just by just by teasing it. <laughs> you tease it out, you know, and then it can finally take so much. They're just like, you know, I can't take it anymore. You know, you're making fun of me too much, I guess. But anyways. There we go. And you can hold it at the base. Just kind of tap it like that. There we go. Good girl. So you're just tapping it out. And then they literally do just start pouring out. 
because they're all stuck at the bottom, like where the skin is, they're all stuck at the skin level. And so what you're doing by tapping it, going in there and just kind of tapping it, you're just kind of pulling it towards the surface a little bit at a time. And then little bit by little bit, as it starts to come towards the surface, you know, towards the ends of the hairs, then boom, it just starts to slide out. As a few of them start to slide out, it starts to, you know, make that room for the others and then they all start to slide out. See that? Good girl. Oh man. There we go. Okay. A little bit of skin sore there because of the there we go, because of tear stains and all that dead hair that just got caked right there. Okay. So loosen all that up. There we go. There we go. Good girl. Go. And, you know, there's really no um, formula to this. It's just, you got, it's a feel job. You got to feel, you just got to get a feel for her. You know, I can't tell you like, oh, um, put this much pressure and then pull back and stuff. It's like, no, you just kind of get the feeling for each dog, how much they're willing to tolerate. And then you just kind of get that feeling where the line is and you just don't cross it. That's all, you know, it's like, it's not a, it's not like a exact science on brushing the dog. And if she were to freak out, start panting and getting stressed, then I might even just call this step off. You know, you just gotta, you gotta be willing to adapt and um, approach each situation in, with unique, with with um, new eyes, you know. Because I think that dog grooming, especially, you cannot take, you cannot come at it with the cookie cutter approach. You know, it's not a one size fits all type of thing. With her, because I, I it was my first time meeting her, you know, I I really have no. Um, set plan or strategy and just first is step one just get her to get to know me get her to get comfortable with my with my presence and me touching her and then we move on to step two but we never step one never ends you know I'm still going to continue to try to build upon the rapport and just, and you know it's not like oh she's okay with me touching her and then I just kind of you know just <laughs> just manhandle her or anything you know ragdoll her like no uh, building rapport is an ongoing thing and never ends and then step two um prepping the skin you know i i would just do as much as she would tolerate really i, I wasn't really sure she was gonna let me comb her out but hey i see the mats like i know i can get them combed out and i know she's gonna feel so much better when she's when it's done but if she just was not able to tolerate it and she was scared and stressed, then I might just go, you know, light brushing and just move on to the bath, you know? And then if she's really just in a situ in a, once after the bath and I'm trying to dry her and I can tell her skin is just in such horrible shape that it's just, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna fluff out. Then, you know, shaving would probably be the next best option. Um, just shaving off the coat and starting over again, you know, so there really is, I, I get questions a lot from different groomers. Um, even recently, a few groomers sent me a link to this video and they're like, do you think this is right or wrong? And my response is always, you know, I try not to think of things in terms of right or wrong anymore. Um, now I try to just look at each situation and just ask myself, does this work for this situation? You know, is this, is this what's best for this dog? You know, and just kind of look at each situation 
like individually and rather than say this person's wrong for doing this or that person's wrong for doing that you know like look at it case by case basis and you know why did this person decide to do this as long as we have good reasons for what we're doing you know as long as when someone asks hey what are you doing why are you doing that and you say I, I don't know. I, I'm just doing this because I'm supposed to be doing this, I guess. It's like, no, it's not a good enough answer. You want to know why you're doing what you're doing. So for me, the reason why I do spend this time and effort is because I know how beneficial it is for her skin. I can feel the difference. It literally feels softer. You know, and here too, where she was all matted before, now that the comb goes through smoothly, it feels much smoother. Her skin literally feels smooth right there, where that just came out. So for me, it's not about how she looks. Of course, having her look nice and fluffy is, is super cute and all, <laughs> but it's more than just the aesthetics for me. It's, it's, more, than a, it's more than just about how she, what she looks like. It's about how she feels. For me, I think that's what grooming is all about. Grooming is about hygiene, skin care, right? right? Nail care, oral care, because it's a, keeping ourselves clean is about good hygiene. It's about good health, right? That's why they say cleanliness is next to godliness. And I really believe that. I think that health is beauty. When we feel good, we look good. So that's why I, you know, people are like, why do you spend so much time? That's torture to the dog. It's only torture if you make it like torture. But if the dog can actually feel, they can sense from you by the way you're touching them, by the way you're brushing them, that you actually care about them a lot and you're doing this to help them and they can feel it because as this comes out and you now comb through their coat, they feel much better. Right? Look how relaxed she is. It's like a mother combing her daughter's hair, you know? Okay. There we go. There we go. Nice. Doesn't that feel much better to love? Down here too, it feels so thick. There we go. Good girl to love. Shoot. There goes my knee pad again. It's okay, we're almost done brushing her at least. There we go. There we go. Hey, and at least this leg is functional. I mean, it looks like she's able to use it. I mean, it's weird. Doesn't seem like it's bothering her either. Okay. There we go. Still want to try to offer her a little bit of support here. There we go. Wow, she feels so much better. Smells better too, my goodness. She kind of smelled a little bit uh, strong. 
the odor was pretty pungent, especially back here. But now she's starting to smell much better. Okay. Nice. Get these mats out. The skin here, in between her thighs, <clears throat> it was rough. Now it's smooth. When I touch it, <clears throat> there we go. So you know it's got to feel better. Because it feels better just to the touch, even when I just touch the skin there. You know, it just seems clean and clear and smooth. It doesn't seem full and bumpy, like tiny pimples everywhere. There we go. Literally, it's like exfoliating the skin. Okay. There we go. So now she is combed all over. Her entire body is combed. Good girl. There you go. <laughs> Probably feels good too. She's like kind of leaning into it. Nice. There we go. See how the, the coat just looks softer and cleaner as we brush out all of this dead hair. So this beautiful soft coat was always there. It's just harder to see and feel when you have all of that dead coat in the way. Because the dead coat is rough, brittle, dry, kind of has a stain color to it. Sometimes it looks yellow or brownish. There we go. All right. Oh man, and all those mats are gone now. Because those mats are constantly pulling at their skin because, you know, they're little tightly bound tangles. And so as we get those mats out, we're giving her some relief much Appreciated relief. There we go. There we go. go and now <clears throat> let's check those ears ears look pretty good okay see the ears look pretty good I mean there is a little bit of hair in there there you go there we go but you want some hair there to protect it, right? We just want to clear enough away where air can flow. See that? So just pull it a little bit out. Alrighty, now I'm going to do the sanitary shave, shave the foot pads, all the clothes shaving before the bath. That way, if there is any skin irritation, kind of like when I get my sideburns or any clothes shaving done for myself, um, it kind of itches. So we'll take care of that after the bath. Uh, let me see here. Oh, wow, Go Grimmer was here. Looks like she left. Uh-huh, wow, awesome. Okay. Wow, there's a lot of comments here. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Okay. You're okay. Seriously, you are the most patient groomer. Pearls Gem says, "June, my dog had a bad experience at her local pet store. I know the rescue dog. I know my rescue dog has trust issues, so I feel bad for the groomer and my dog." Mm hmm. What's up, KWATK? Uh, Chrissy, go groomer says, "Hello, sunshine. Hello. That that's awesome." Hey, what's up, Amy? Beverly says, "Debbie Jack, hi, Amy. Hope your day's going well. Hi, Bev." I'm already in love with this little girl. Oh, Beverly. Um, go Gurmer. Amy says, you too, Debbie. I'm on the treadmill. Uh, OMG, my two favorite Gurmers. Hi, Amy. <laughs> she, nice. She is a sweet baby girl. Thank you, Amy. Hey, APEA. Love watching June Groom. Great exercise. My husband wants to get a treadmill. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, so I thought these were questions coming up for me. You guys are having like a conversation in the background. <laughs> Getting older and need, uh huh. Love you too, sweetie. Pearls Jam, what a sweet girl. Her hair looks softer now. Yeah, it is. So soft now. You can tell it feels good to her. Yeah, oh my goodness. Tool up. I love you, girl. Oh, okay. Um, what's wrong with her legs? I'm totally late. Yeah, she's, she was recently um, rescued. Well, I mean, this is like a trial period. She's here, but um, yeah, she came like this. She has a little brace for this. It just bent. I guess it broke and then just healed that way. Linda, um, Islas, how long did it take for you to start your business? <sighs> a long time, I guess. Uh, I opened up my shop in Buckhead back in 2012. Um, so, you know, seven years, I guess, eight years. I'm still here. Oh, what's up? Amy's still here. Oh, poor thing. Yeah, right? So, and, oh, Amy, so uh, this is uh, a great example of how we're all artists and as long as you have a good reason for what you do i don't think it's i don't think it's you know right or wrong per se you know just does it work and is it is it good for the dog and so amy i believe she does her sanitary shave and shaves the pads after the bath and i remember i think i remember her saying that it's because you know she likes to work on clean hair when she's clipping and that makes sense. And, you know, so, but, you know, I'm not saying that I'm wrong or she's wrong or right. So I, I like to tell people, we're artists. Try not to think of it in terms of right or wrong. Like they say, there's many ways to skin a cat, right? <laughs> and I know that's just the saying, but there's many ways to groom a dog. And I don't know if it's a... I don't know if it's a very productive conversation to have, you know, and like trying to figure out if somebody's right or wrong. Just look at it as, would that work for this situation? Does it work for that dog? You know, things like that. Anyways, but as long as you have a process and you stick with it, you know, there we go. There we go. Oh wow, those nails are long. Okay. Oh, all right, she's kind of tucking that paw in there. Come on, Tula. It's the same thing we did with the other feet. There you go. There you go. And she might just be more sensitive about this paw than the other paw and a little bit more protective about it because it's her good paw, you know? 
and I'm just guessing here. I'm not, I'm not saying this as an absolute fact. I don't know. But if you noticed, she was a lot more um, hesitant, reluctant for me to shave this one. See, she tucks it under, right? Then all the other paws. And it might be because um, with this paw here, because it is crooked and she has a hard time standing on it because it bends, um, that might be why she tucks this one under when I work on this one. She's like a little bit more careful about this one since that's the one she relies on. And that's just my guess. Okay. Uh, when this is all poor thing, go I agree with you, neither right or wrong. Exactly. And it's just, you know, it's just their style, right? We each have our style. And um, I think just like uh, mixed martial arts. So I love mixed martial arts. MMA. Um, I don't like fighting though, which is weird because, sorry, I have my camera split the... Anyways, um, I don't actually like fighting. If anybody fights around me or anything, I get very uncomfortable. I'm, I'm usually out of there. So I don't actually, I'm not, I don't like violence. I don't like fighting or confrontation for that matter. But the mixed martial arts fascinates me. And the thing is, the analogy I like to bring is um, you don't want to say like, oh, Karate is the best. Look at Leo Machida. No, boxing is the best. Look at this guy. You know, no, you need strong wrestling. No, judo, judo is the best. Jiu Jitsu is the best. You know, it's like, no, try not to think in terms of right or wrong or which style is the best. Um, just which style would work the best in this situation, you know, things like that. And knowing your style and developing your style. And um, like Mike, uh, Bruce Lee says, take what works discard what doesn't and develop your own style that works, you know, for you. Okay, so we got the foot pads shaved. Now I'm going to switch over to my ten blade and do her sanitary. <clears throat> there we go. And I could do the foot pads with the 10 as well, but I like doing it with the 30 because it, the 30 is just that much closer. It's a little shorter and gives you a little bit closer to shave right under the pads to get make it nice and neat and tight. And when it's not that much of a difference, it's uh, this is 1.5 millimeters. It doesn't even say, but I just know right off the top of my head because I'm good like that. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> this is 1.5 millimeters and this is 0.5 millimeters. So it's like a mi one millimeter shorter. So it's not too much of a difference, but it does, you know, it's all the details. The little things make a difference. And I'm just skimming, just skimming this area to clean it up, get it nice and neat in there. There we go. And then I guess, let me see if I can get her to turn around. There we go. Okay. Okay. There you go. You got it? You all right? All right, let me actually turn her this way. There we go. Good job, girl. Okay. And then one last thing before I actually wash her is fingernail, toenails. Oh my goodness, I didn't get the nail clippers. Okay, let me take her with me. Just in case she rolls and tumbles right off the table. <laughs> I don't want her to tumble off the table here while I get the nail clippers. Alrighty, we are back. There we go. 
So I'm gonna clip her nails. And this is an, um, is an area where a lot of dogs have issues. And I'll start with this, this paw here. Wow, so that's pretty long. See how it's curled up? Oh man, I'm not sure if you can see it. <clears throat> but yeah, see it's kind of curled over. So what I'm going to do is see where the quick looks like it ends and then just give a little bit of um, room and just clip right above it. There we go. Good girl. And then clip the next one. There we go. There we go. All right, see, so now they're all, all nice and short. Oh, okay. Look at that dew claw. She has a dew claw. Of course she would have a dew claw. There we go. I'm sorry, girl. Okay. I'm going to lift her a little bit so she doesn't have to support herself on that bad that, uh, foot there. pretty long. Sorry, girl. There we go. Now for the back feet. Oh, you're okay, girl. You're okay. Oh, she has teeth. I wasn't sure if she had teeth or not. Yeah, she has all her teeth. Oh, wow. Healthy looking teeth. Okay. Felt that. It's okay. There you go. Okay. Good girl. Yeah, the back feet are pretty good. They're pretty short. Good girl. Mm -hmm. She has something growing on that pad. That's weird. So that's, and I think that's what caused the reaction. Let me show it to you. She has this, uh, see that? like a horn growing off that foot pad right there. And I bet that causes her a little bit of pain when you touch it or mess with it. So. Oh, okay. Sorry about that girl. She tried to nip me again. <laughs> so I'll see if I can maybe get that out in the bath while we're in the tub. I mean, while we're in the shower. But other than that, she is ready for the bath. So now, oh. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. Let's do a little bit of a, an outro here. Start. There we go. Okay, so that concludes step two. Oh, prepping the skin and getting her ready for the bath. So now she's all ready for the bath. And after the bath, we're going to dry her. Right, girl? So, so that's step three. Three is wash and dry, which is what we're about to do now in my process. So after we're done with step three, wash and dry, we're going to do step four, which is the haircut and finish. All right, girl? <laughs> All right. See, but that's what I was talking about when I hold her. She acts like a little baby. Oh, my goodness. Isn't she the cutest? Oh, okay. Um, let me see. AP, what a long way you've come with fearful tulip. Did not expect to see her do so well, especially on the nails. True artistry and compassion. Wow, thank you. Stacy says, so cute. Oh, uh, Amy says, LOL, I knew I missed something. I need to pay attention here. 
uh, APA says, I was just joking about what June said about different ways to skin a cat. Sorry, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Joking. Uh -huh. Okay. APEA -A -A Doggery says, I know you're a dog groomer, but why skin the poor cat? <laughs> just joking. Uh huh. Nice. <laughs> awesome. You two are wonderful working together. Oh. But yeah, Amy, I, I guess a lot of people are, it's, it's not the first time somebody suggested that you and I do a stream together. Um, that would be pretty cool. Maybe sometime in the summer or something like that. But yeah, let me know when you have time. Maybe I'll fly out there into Pennsylvania and you can put me to work at your shop, you know? <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you guys. Let me, oh, there we go. Oh, so maybe I'll stream again when I do her haircut. Oh, just so we can have some closure to the whole thing, you know, so we bring it around full circle. All right, I'm in. Oh, Amy says I'm in. Nice. So, yeah, let's try to figure that out. I'll email you. I'm booked up till April, but I'm, I haven't scheduled my summer yet. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's do like a weekend or something. I'll fly out to Pennsylvania, um, you know, and then... Yeah, to get like an Airbnb or something and an Uber and we'll do a we'll do a dog together. Maybe what we could do is like get your doodle that you have. Um, I forget his name, Andy, I think. But anyways, maybe what we could do is uh, get one dog. You do one half, I do the other half, you know, just just to show people how we can come to the same result. Just, you know, different techniques. I don't know. Um, obviously my style would look so much better, but it's okay. It's all right. I mean, it's okay. It's not a competition, you know. Um, any, see, any advice you can give me as I'm doing a diploma in dog grooming would be helpful. Uh-huh. Um, Gus, that's right, Gus. Uh-huh. <clears throat> but Stacy, um, let's see. Any advice in, I would say it's, it's all, you would really want to hone in on your brushing technique because be, really the difference between a really nice groom and a kind of mediocre groom is usually the differences in the brushing how how much brushing did you do you know um so the one who brushed a little more thoroughly their dog is going to have a nicer texture nicer coat and then also i would recommend practicing your scissor skills make sure you can scissor straight up and down too. See that? So make sure you can do you do that. When you have solid scissor skills and solid combing and brushing skills, right? Then then the grooming grooming is is going to be so fun and uh, rewarding for you. Um, again, going back to MMA um, analogies, um, comparing it to mixed martial arts. The reason why um, some of the really flashy martial artists, the fighters like John Jones and all of them, the reason why they're able to do such flashy things and take risks that other people are not able to take, flying knees, those spectacular moves, is because they have such a solid ground game. John Jones was such a high level elite wrestler before he learned how to throw a punch. So the thing is, um, he's not afraid of his opponent taking him down. So he's, 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 uh, I guess got the courage, you know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't have any fear when he throws his wild kicks or spinning elbows and all those things, because he knows that even if it doesn't work out and the, his opponent catches him, takes him to the ground, that's, that's his world. You know, he doesn't, he, it doesn't bother him. He's not scared. Same thing for dog grooming. When you have a dog that might be twisting, turning, moving around, snapping, they're not cooperating well. And you just can't get the clippers, you know, because the clippers make that noise and there's reacting to it. Now you have the option to just comb the hair up, right? And then just go down with the scissors. You know, you have so many options. So what I'm saying is that you can, by having strong scissor skills, it's like having strong ground game in mixed martial arts, having a strong scissor game, right? By having strong scissor skills, even if your clippers act up, no matter, even if the dog acts up, you don't mind getting taken down by the dog because you have strong scissor skills, right? So that would be my best advice, Stacy. And it takes about 10,000 hours to master something. So 
hour after hour practice, really focus on developing those muscles, this muscle memory. Um, and, and once you have a strong um, scissor game, then you really don't have to rely on, rely on much else. Um, okay, Nancy says, so sweet, nice. Go Girlman says, yes, 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 nice, awesome. So I'll see you guys. Let me go ahead and get her washed up. Oh, isn't she so cute? Oh my goodness.